All right, stream looks good. It's up and live. And now uh, we were talking about using Twitch and D Live and YouTube, and you know which which ones are the most popular, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I, I have been using library just as a, as a user, but like, is DLive connected to library? I'm, I'm not sure. No, so it's a separate app. It, so I'm using Odyssey, which is what library is becoming. So if you have the old school, well, I call it old school. If you have the library thick client, which is almost like a, a miner where you mine your coins when you upload yeah. your videos. Okay, so now... They have a new website called Odyssey, O-D-S-Y-E-E, -E, and my uh, odyssey.com and, and library is migrating to Odyssey for their web service or the website uh, streaming app. Okay. Okay. So it'll still mine the LBRY coins for uploading videos and, and watching content, but, uh, it was the library.com or library.tv or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, the library.tv. So they're just moving over to the uh, Odyssey uh, website, but it's still library. When you open up your thick client, do you happen to have the thick client like running on your computer? Have you seen it before? No. I have that on one of my computers, but not this one. And I had my other channels on there and uh, it's pretty good. But it, it works like in a decentralized environment. It's not as uh, decentralized as Theta. If you ever heard of Theta, yeah, I heard about it. But yeah, I, <clears throat> I'm not. I didn't really go into depth about these these kinds of services. I, but like, just as a user, I like to go on library. My favorite simple thing about library is if you have a mobile app and you want to listen to something, you can lock your phone and it continues playing. And, yeah. You know, Compared yeah. to YouTube, that's a big deal. So well, that's yeah, why. so to to run it on Theta, you got to run a Theta node locally in order to do ah, that. But okay. what I did is I, um, what I did is uh, I put up on Odyssey, D Live, Twitch, but the most popular platform is still YouTube. So we're gonna roll into our live stream here since uh, we're up and live. We gave people a few minutes to get dialed in. And I see there's a lot of folks here now. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us here on a Friday night. I hope everyone's having a great Friday afternoon, a Friday evening. We have Philip here with us today. And the key here with Cardano is we have the largest DAO in the world. A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization with a large number of people uh, involved doing work putting in proposals, putting in bids to do work for Cardano on the Cardano platform. And they can be uh, rewarded based on, get uh, you know, they put in a proposal, winning the proposal, and it wins the vote, which is voted on using the Catalyst app and your ADA coins for the voting. Now, Philip is here because he is a, he is a community advisor. And so, Philip, I would like you to uh, go and tell us what is a community advisor what is a community advisor? What do they do? What are the responsibilities? First of all, thanks for being here, Philip. I really appreciate you coming on and volunteering to tell us more about Project Catalyst and community advisors. And Philip will be doing an AMA in, in a little bit. We'll get a little bit of discussion going, and then we'll, he'll answer your questions. So, uh, Philip, tell us a little bit about Project Catalyst and the community advisor. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Rick. It's, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with one of the legends of the, of the, you know, the Cardano space. So, uh, like you said, uh, Project Catalyst is a, is a project, a fund, an experiment where people who have ideas uh, to develop different projects or different solutions, integrations, ideas that, uh, let's say, uh, improve, build on Cardano and build on any parts of Cardano, have an opportunity to present their proposal and to get funding for that proposal. Uh, so that's that's like from the from the proposer side, from the from the proposer's perspective, that's what you can get by joining Project Catalyst. From Cardano's side, uh, it's like you you told me you participated in in a Shelly incentivized testnet when you were like in a 
in a long time ago when we didn't have staking. <laughs> uh, so there was a test net for the stake pool operators, which was basically uh, IOG, Cardano Foundation gave some money for people to test out the new technology before we roll it out on the mainnet. So internally, Project Catalyst is called Voltaire Incentivized Testnet. Voltaire is the last uh, part in the Cardano roadmap, and it's connected to the governance, to the governance of the chain, to the sustainability, and, uh, you know, uh, we're tackling ideas on how are we going to, how are we going to, in a distributed, decentralized way, govern this whole ecosystem so it doesn't fall apart, so it doesn't fork off into five different chains or whatever. So that's Cardano's like mission. That's what Cardano wants to achieve, to have a community that is well aware, that is understanding on how to improve itself, how to be sustainable, and how, <clears throat> and how to incentivize participants to participate. So, you know, one of the main roles is, of course, you can be a proposer. Like I said, you can propose a project, you can get money for that project, and that's it. So when you propose, when you make a proposal and you propose, uh, all of those proposals go out for voting. Like you said, we vote through a capitalist step and anyone actually from this fund onward, anyone with more than 500 ADA in their wallet will be eligible to vote. For the first, for fund two, it was 8,000. For fund three, it was 3,000. Now it's 500. So there are some technical limitations, but it's getting lower and lower every time. And now basically, you know, people, whoever has 500 data can participate in the voting and actually affect the outcome of the, of the votes. But between, between voting and, you know, there are several stages in the process of Catalyst. So you propose, and before your proposal goes onto the ballot, there is this assessment stage. We are right now in the assessment stage of Fund 5. And in this assessment stage, uh, proposals are locked. They cannot be changed anymore. They cannot be edited or withdrawn or whatever. They are just what they are. And community advisors like me rate different proposals with stars from one to five and with short comments. We have three sections. We have impact, auditability, and feasibility. Uh, you know, how aligned is this proposal with the Cardano mission, with a separate challenge that is, you know, that is that the proposal aims to solve? Uh, how auditable is it? Because when you get the money, uh, you are you are, let's say, obliged on a weekly basis to put the reports out to the community so that like the whole community audits where did that money go how are you using it are you making progress on your things and so on and so on and that's how you you know you build your reputation let's say uh, and uh, so that's impact auditability and feasibility is basically we're giving a you know we're trying to to understand if it's you know if the execution of the project is realistic is the plan well presented is the timeline the cost breakdown you know we go into plenty of other details uh, there are comments we ask questions to the proposal pro proposers and they answer and we're trying and with with the uh, with the stars rating we're trying to make an informed decision for the voter because when you open your voting app you will have these grades that the community advisors gave, you will have an average of the grades. And that will kind of be, can be your guideline. Doesn't have to be, it's just an advice, but it can be your guideline on how good is this proposal, how much, you know, maybe it deserves or doesn't deserve to, to receive funding. Uh, the goal of, um, of the whole catalyst basically is to be sustainable. So. We don't, you know, IOG and everybody included, they don't uh, expect, you know, volunteering is fine. It's nice. It's, you know, we want to change the world. Yay, you know. But <laughs> no, one, no one is going to be here like two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, if there are no clear incentives. 
So, uh, first of all, voters get incentives for voting. Uh, now, this is relatively small, let's say. It depends, again, on how much ADA do you have to vote with. It is relatively small for now. These incentives get increased every every fund, but some of it, some voting is, is incentivized as well. Community advising is incentivized as well. Uh, it's uh, a bit maybe too complicated to, to say now exactly how much money you can get because it's uh, there is a lottery factor in it. And if you're really interested in it, if you go to IOHK's channel on YouTube, the, you can watch the la uh, last town hall from this Wednesday, 28th of April. And you have Dor, who is a project catalyst uh, leader from IOG. He explains everything. He's like a facilitator. I've noticed that. Uh, yes, he is. He, I mean, he, he informs people this is how it works and this is what we can yeah. do. And then he gets everybody's inputs and kind of guides, yeah. you know. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and he's a pretty awesome guy. He really is. He is. He is. Charles describes him as a, he is like a warm hug, I think. <laughs> he's like, a well, yeah. Yeah, I kind of yeah. consider him kind of like Thor. He reminds me of Thor because his name is Dor. I could see him I, with a band hammer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but, but he is he is cool. But, he is cool, and he explains in detail like the awards breakdown, rewards breakdown, and all of that. So you have everything transparent. Everything is open. So you know, you told me an interesting story the other day. How do we get there from here? Right now, we have Shelly on the main net. Okay. <clears throat> We have Mainnet Shelly, and then we have Basho coming up. Um, things are kind of deployed in layers. That way you can change one layer without breaking the other ones. And then eventually there's Voltaire, right? And the, the main, the key behind Voltaire is to have proper on-chain governance so that you don't fork, so that uh, if there's ever a dispute in the code, you don't have to fork the code. You don't have to fork the community because if you fork the code, you're going to fork the community as well. And by having proper on-chain governance, you're not having one oligarchy or one small group of people making all the decisions. Uh, and, you know, I can kind of tolerate that. You know, if other people voted to go in one direction and it's not the direction I really wanted, it might be a direction I can live with because I realize, wow, you know, that was a lot of other people that voted for that. And I'm probably going to be okay with that. But the important part is the way you described me, the path to get to Voltaire Um and, and how, how is that? Uh, you were describing something about, uh, you know, if, if we want to get to Voltaire from here, IOG can't do it alone. Can you tell me that story again? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, Shelly is now live on mainnet, like you said. And, you know, Shelly in itself was a significant monumental technical problem. Gogan is, you know, we are all looking forward to Alonso hard work that is coming hopefully in August and it is again a significant technical very difficult problem that we have you know hundreds of great engineer scientists working on it and it's a technical problem and then after that we have basho which is scaling and no blockchain today really really satisfied for now that problem so again it's a very complicated very difficult technical problem voltaire is a very difficult technical problem in the beginning, but it's much more than that. It's a societal problem. It's a distributed. You know, there is, you can put, you can give Charles all the time in the world. You can put all the scientists you want in the world. And if you don't have people participating, there will be no Voltaire by definition. We want to make a decentralized, distributed government system. You have to have distributed units to have a distributed system. So, you know, of course, Gogan is a difficult challenge. Of course, Basho is a difficult challenge. And, you know, like we, we saw Africa Special and, you know, even Atala Prism is an impressive technology and, you know, DIDs and all of that. But to really have Voltaire, you have to have participation from the people, from the holders, and like meaningful participation. Maybe that will be voting, maybe that will be advising, maybe that will be, you know, getting on Discord and just talking with someone about something, giving your opinion, because that's that's what it is. 
you know that's that's what it is and uh, yes you, you you gave an example like i can live with you know if i have an idea and i'm the only one having an idea i can accept that maybe that's a stupid idea like if a thousand other people think it's not that's much easier for me to accept than you know having the single you know committee of five people deciding that it's a stupid idea but you know conversations like that are important and we have so much like in catalyst discord you have whole channels dedicated to like uh, game theory political theory uh, you have people discussing uh, distributed systems we have swarm sessions on the weekends you have I, I can't even follow there's like so so many things are happening and that's great right and that's what i wanted to say like catalyst is for the normal people you know i i'm not you know ben gord so i'm not charles i'm you know i did i we're just normal people hanging out and trying to give impact as much as we can and that that's the point in the end you know the point isn't to have the smartest guy in the room making all the decisions you know because we accepted that no matter how benevolent that person can be in the beginning more much more often than not they are you know eligible for corruption for you know whatever we don't want to centralize power so we need to distribute it decentralize it so that's why we need people to participate right now just to give off a few numbers i think we have about 30000 registered uh, users in IdeaScale. IdeaScale is like a website interface for Project Catalyst. And I think we have 20,000 registered wallet wallets for Fund4, if I'm not mistaken. And for the last fund, we had about 1.5 billion ADA voting. So there's definitely participation, but again, we need more we want more people to, to come on and to help. So this is an all hands effort. We need yeah. people to get involved with voting, uh, people to register their ADA to vote with the Catalyst app on a mobile device, which is important. Currently, I understand it is it is kind of difficult for the average person. It is getting better. It is an experiment. And we have time to make it better, but it takes all hands effort involved. So we need more people putting in proposals. We need more people voting on proposals. And we need, do we need more community advisors like yourself as well? Are there enough? Definitely no, there's not, not even close to enough. There's not enough community advisors. There's not so, enough community advisors. There's uh, like from, from any perspective, like if, if you join Catalyst, then you, you will see very quickly that whatever you want, that, that's the point right now at this point, whatever you find interesting, it's so easy to just get into that, to talk to people and be a part of the solution for that problem. Because everybody, everybody needs more people, everybody needs more, you know, uh, action, everybody needs more hands on deck, like, like you call, like you call it. Wow. Okay. So people can, oh, so I put some links down below. What I need folks to do is check out the links down below. I got a links to idea scale, get on idea scale, create an account, log in there. There's information on how to become a community advisor. It's not a walk in a park. It's not real easy to do, but once you do it, once you become a base community advisor, you can get rewards for serving as a community advisor. And thank you for your service, Philip. Very much appreciated. Then there are veteran community advisors, right? People who've been through multiple iterations of the process and the rewards increase. Yes? Uh, yes. To be precise, every fund uh, we have, let's say for fund four, we have $80,000 uh, dedicated for community advisors in total. 4% of that goes to normal community advisors. 1% goes to veteran community advisors. But to put it into perspective, in fund four, we had 140, I will say, community advisors, and we had 18 veteran community advisors, 18 people. So, because okay. being, being a veteran community advisor is, you know, it's uh, serious, you know, you have to 
I, I've been a veteran community advisor in fund four and fund three, and it's it takes more effort and you have to be at least uh, for one fund, you need to be a CA, community advisor, so that in the next fund, you can be a, a VCA veteran. Okay. Thanks for that awesome information. What I'd like to do at this point, I would like to encourage viewers to start asking questions. Now, we have one viewer over on Twitch that I can see right now. Shout out to that person over on Twitch. Let me know if you're still there. Throw me a comment so I can see it come up on StreamYard. Uh, several folks right now, 26 people on YouTube. Let us know if you have questions about how does Project Catalyst work? We got an expert here. We got Philip. He's a community member. He's a community advisor. He's a software engineer by trade, by day. He spends all day doing software engineer stuff. Uh, and then in his evenings, you're on travel right now too, right? You got a little bit of a story to tell us, okay? So ask us your questions. Uh, right now, most of the questions in the chat are, I can't understand the language, so I don't know what, they, what they're saying. Um, go ahead and ask some questions for Philip if you have them on what is Project Catalyst, uh, idea scale, submitting proposals. Check out the links down below. Uh, we've got a link to the Telegram where you can ask questions to the Project Catalyst chat or the Project Catalyst Telegram <clears throat> and get signed up over there on Idea Scale. And make sure you register to vote. So uh, tell me that story the other day about uh, personal space. So you're a traveler. So give us a little bit of a background story about your work and your travel and then personal space. All right. This is kind of funny. Y'all got to check this out. Uh, okay, so yeah, I am I am a software engineer. I'm a, I'm a commissioning engineer. So I uh, I commission the machines in, in factories around the world. So I've been lucky enough to to go quite a lot of places around the world. And when Rick and me were talking, I mentioned when I was in China, and I spent a couple of months in Shanghai. And I in, in where yet now? I'm now in Portugal. I'm uh, I live in Croatia. I'm in Portugal. If anyone is from Portugal, you have a very nice country. Yeah. Shout out to People Portugal, very... inventors of yeah. paella. So, so sorry to interrupt your story. So you you're from uh, Czech, not Czech Republic, uh, Croatia. I'm from Croatia. I was born in Serbia. I live in Croatia, uh, and yes, I was in China. Spent some time there, and okay. uh, yeah, so we were we were talking about cultural differences, you know. And actually, most most places where I go, I find much more similarities than differences. But in China, there were some some differences, and I, I mentioned the the personal space. So, like something that is that is like it's it's a cultural difference. And I'm sure if there's any Chinese people in the chat, I'm sure they can, you know, confirm. They'll, they'll, they'll agree. They'll, they'll, they'll agree. What, this is <laughs> yeah. funny. So it was like, I, I was, I was saying that I was sitting down at my computer and I was programming and it was a stressful situation. And you know, the machine is not working and you have to fix it immediately. And there's like six to 11 operators around me at all time, but they are like behind me and their heads are like here like literally here. So if I turn, I'm, I'm really in their face. It's, it's uncomfortably close. For, you could literally kiss them. <laughs> yeah. It's uncomfortably close for anyone that's not, you know, Chinese, I would say, I don't know. It was definitely uncomfortably close for me. And then, and you look at the person and they, they really don't see anything wrong with it. They just smile at you. You know, they, they don't step away. They don't step back. They just seem, you know, that's, that's the culture. And of course, I'm in China, I'm in their country, I have to respect it. So yeah, that's that was something to to get used to, to get used to. And so one what? guy staring over your shoulder and you turn and look at him. Yeah, and he looks at me and he smiles and we look at each other like that. And yeah. That's Good. just normal. <laughs> we have yeah, that's that's what's going on. Yeah. But, wow. but so mostly You've been I, to I, Nigeria and a couple other places as well, I, right? I've been to Nigeria, yes. And uh, like uh, when I was watching the Africa special, some scenes, you know, reminded me of, of that place. And, I, you know, I've seen people living in very poor, difficult conditions. And, you know, just makes you appreciate what you have. You come back home and, you know, like ordering food is something that we're so used to. It's like it's so normal for us. But really, if you think about it, it's you have this magical device. It's nothing short of magical at that, that, that this time. 
you just press a couple of buttons and a person literally comes to your door and brings you food and you pay it with some magic internet money and you know that's it's just we take it for granted and it's really really amazing yeah, it is getting way too easy. I, I used the new app a few days ago. I don't remember which one it was, but I have an email. And it was like pay up. It was an entirely a web app. And you just, you pull it up on your phone, scan the QR code. The server never even touches anything. And it was at uh, like um, PF Chang, which is a restaurant here in the United mm -hmm. States. And uh, everything was in the web browser and paid by my credit card. No contact with anything. And I was like, that was just too easy. Oh, by the way, why don't you just connect it to your ROI while you're at it and you pay with crypto instead of fiat and credit cards. But anyway, that's a different story for a different podcast. But thanks for sharing that story. I thought that was kind of funny about the personal space. Yeah. I've been I've been to Japan as well, where when you get on a on a on a train in Japan, and the people of Japan are culturally different than people from China. When you get on a train, you'll wedge in. I mean, you'll get in there nice and Tight. Uh, Pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID later this year in a couple of months, hopefully. Um, but yeah, you'll wedge in really tight on that train. But uh, and nobody talks. Completely silent. Train is packed from end to end. You can't barely even move, and nobody talks. And that's just the culture. But in the U.S., if you got three people in a train car, you're all spaced out in your own big seats, all stretched out, and it's a party. Everybody's yakking. Hey, what you doing? Where are you going? Yo, what's going on over there, man? Right? And it's it's loud and noisy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, my friend even got chided on a tra on a train in Japan for talking too loud. <laughs> Because wow. the lady, the lady who's traveling with said, "Can you stop talking so loud? There's people on this train." Yeah, it's it's a cultural difference. But like I said, most places I've been to, uh, I find much more. Like the first site I went to, I went to Brazil. And I stayed also there for a couple of months. And I expected like this whole new world, like South America, it has to be totally different than what I know. And it was very, very similar. And it just, you know, also, we tend to, you know, you know, maybe distance each other. Ah, these people from over there, who knows what they are like. And, and then you go halfway across the world and it's basically the same. We all like to eat and drink and no one likes to work. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of commonalities there. Yes, there is. There really, really is. And that's yeah. something basic that connects us all. So. Yeah. All right. So we did get a few questions in chat and then we'll wrap it up for the day. And it's a great Friday afternoon. Um, we did have Darko was in chat helping us out in, in another language. Thank you, Darko. He said, sorry, Rick, no need to apologize, Darko. Thanks for helping us out. And uh, there's many languages across the world. And Crypto Addictive asks, what is the job of the advisor? We covered that at the beginning, but can you give us a brief summary? What does a, what does a community advisor do in Project Catalyst for Crypto Addictive? Yeah, there's definitely. A, so uh, the... The job, let's say, that the role that we consider ourselves to have is to help the voters and to help the proposers. So we assess the proposal presented by the proposer. So it's like, think about uh, mm, uh, registering for a venture capital fund. So you have an idea, you have to write it down. They ask you for some documents and you present them that idea. And we are the ones who take that idea and kind of grade it, let's say. Grade it and give you constructive feedback on that idea. And those grades we show to the voters. And then voters can say, okay, you know, this is 4.3 stars. This is actually pretty good. This is 1.2 stars and the reviews are not so positive. So maybe I shouldn't vote for that. So it's just to guide the voters and to give constructive feedback to proposers. So they can improve on on their own on their own ideas. Okay, so that's pretty good. So if a voter, it, it is really hard to gather the time to read every single proposal in detail to vote. But if they can at least look at the number of stars awarded by a community advisor, they know it's been looked at with some level of rigor and some level of experience was applied to that proposal. So it can help people with their voting choices, right? Yeah, uh, definitely. When if you want to go into rigor. Uh, there are actually incentive scheme is such that we are aiming for each proposal to have at least three reviews. So if you rate a 
proposals that have low number of reviews, you have a higher chance of receiving an award as a community advisor. So the incentive scheme is made in a way to incentivize reviewing uh, proposals that are not reviewed enough, let's say. Okay. All right. Thank you, Philip. And thank you for uh, Crypto Addicted. Thanks for that question. We got one more question in the chat. We'll cover that and wrap it up for the day from uh, Stan Kamandur. Uh, why Why did Philip become an advisor? Why did you become an advisor? Uh, well, you know, I was trying to find the way I like Cardano. I like what's what's going on. And, you know, at, at the time before Catalyst, I think Shelly just began. I didn't feel comfortable enough you know, going to the route of stake pool operator. Didn't have the technical skills, didn't have the stake maybe necessary, didn't have the marketing skills to find people to get the stake, you know, all of that. It just seemed like a lot to me. And this was like a way to, okay, let's let's open this, you know, door set, just come on in, register, and you don't have to do anything if you don't want. You, you have no obligations, you know. I came in there, I looked at all these proposals, I saw people working and they said, okay, if you want to be a community advisor, you can. And it was just a way for me to, to let's say, take out a couple of hours a week, a couple of hours a week, sometimes more, sometimes less, and make some kind of impact and have a reward in return. So uh, it's it's a very nice way of getting from I'm interested in this to, okay, I'm helping in building this. It's a very nice, smooth way. You know, it's not a full-time job. It's not like in your face. And, you know, if you feel overwhelmed, you can always close it and there's no repercussion. You know, no one's going to do anything to you. You can meet great people. You can get ideas. You can get, it's just, that's, that's how it started for me. And also, there was a selfish reason. Sorry, Rick. There was a selfish reason. I always thought I'm gonna I'm gonna find some great, you know, project, new token that will be launched launched on Cardano. And of course, in Fun Two, Liquid was the first one, and still waiting on that token. But that was like, you know, that's kind of the selfish incentive. You want to be the first one to know something. Exactly. And everybody's motivation is different. Navy SEAL told me one time, it doesn't matter what motivates you as long as you're motivated. And if your motivation is you might find that project, that's fine. You're still doing work. You're still putting in effort that otherwise would have been lost. You're still learning something new. You're still building Cardano. This takes tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people to build something of this magnitude. This is a global operating system with the largest down in the world. It takes a lot of people to build it. And every community advisor counts. Every proposer counts. And every, you know, and all the work being put into it is going to add up over the years, you know. So we really appreciate your work. You're getting some really good comments in the chat. Thank you, Darker, as well. Crypto Addictive and uh, Martin Deltetic. I see you guys are giving us some uh, props there. Give Philip some props for that. And uh, Timbo asks, are you proud of what you have done so far? That's a really good question. I like uh, how your questions. Thank you, Timbo. Go ahead, Philip. Uh, well, I, I mean. Was there any like ex, you know some special achievements? No, I wouldn't say so. But I am proud of the consistency that I've put into that. You know, I I tend to sometimes you know put in effort and then give up on on things. And this has been consistent, and it's consistently and slowly being been ramping up. You know, so yes, I am. I I feel like I do make some kind of a small difference somewhere in the places that I do. And I see that it's appreciated in the community, inside the people of the community. And we appreciate each other. And we try to support each other, you know, because, you know, it's it's a community. It's We are the community. We are building it. If we want it to feel nice, we have to treat each other nicely, basically. So, so yeah, yeah I, I am proud more of what we all all have done you know if i i've been from the beginning in catalyst at least when it was public and i see it's a whole different ball game from just like six months ago it's completely i don't even know if it existed six months ago 
but it's it's growing rapidly and you see people engaged and you see people doing things of their own will no one's asking for permission they're just pushing and it's a great thing it's, yeah it's and thing. you know maybe is some people might feel proud like i might feel proud other people have a feeling of accomplishment whether you're proud or not you get this feeling hey i made a difference 10 years from now i'll get i'll be able to look back and say I contributed. I helped build that. Uh, you know, that's awesome. We do have one more question from Stan. We'll wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. I appreciate it. If there's any burning questions, pop them in chat real quick. And Stan asks, are proposals being checked after they've been funded? Uh, they they are being checked. We have an auditability system. Every funded proposal is obliged to send weekly or biweekly reports to IOG and or presents those reports to the community. Actually, some of the efforts inside Catalysts are to make web pages spe uh, specifically designed to track funded proposals, to track people. Now, to be completely fair, like, is there a, is there a way to, like, you know, take money back from people if they're not doing anything not right now? And maybe that's not even the goal. You know, uh, we are checking, but by you know, it's it's not a perfect system by any means. It's an iterative system, and we're trying to make it as better as as much as we can. And that's why we need, you know, more honest, willing supporters. And these kind of questions are actually very good when they come from a from a place of you know uh, uh, from a place of understanding. And but it's okay to ask the questions that are you know that are not provocative but that are important you know so what kind of skill sets do you think uh an advisor should have is it should should you be a software engineer do you need to know a lot about crypto or do we need a broad variety what's your take on that i would say that we need a broad variety uh, there are discussions that maybe you know we can develop let's say expert classes on separate things you know because if i'm uh if I'm a freelance painter, I I don't think that I can really review, uh, 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 you know, an API design by someone because you know, I, I don't know what that means or vice versa. Um, but that's OK. We need a lot of people. We need a lot of people with a lot of opinion that are behaving in a, in a good will, in, in, a, in a friendly manner and are willing to learn and improve. Yeah. But like. People always think like we need programmers, we need uh, IT guys, we need technical. No, I would say right now at this point, we would. I would like to see law students. You know, I would like to see uh, practicing politicians. I would yeah. like to see people who have been. You know, governance. It's nice to talk about it in theory. Yay! It's going to be decentralized, and we're all going to hold hands, and it's going to be wonderful. It's dirty. It can get dirty. It can get, you know, so we need people with skills and with, with experience in that. And let's let's try and make it. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll use an example that recently self emerged and then we'll wrap it up and I'll give you the last words. OK, no. so look at the look at the um, what's it called? The synergy that recently occurred between artists, software engineers, developers, web developers, back-end, front-end, and internet security experts. They're starting to kind of form an informal team, if you will. And you got the artists who can make NFTs. You got the secure on one end, you know, making the actual art. And then you got the web security specialists on the other end, making a way to prevent bots from slamming the NFT website. And then everywhere in the middle, you have developers at different stages to make sure, can you send the NFTs fast enough? Can it read the wallet address correctly? And it just takes a team of people to bring this together. Same thing is happening on Project Catalyst is as people are coming together and building projects over there. And you're going to get big players in the out years. You know, there's a massive amount of funding sitting on there right now. Half a billion dollars, $500 million sitting on Project Catalyst. It's going to continue to grow because it's growing at about, about $7 million, eight every five days, right? And right now we're only burning about. On a couple million ADA every every five six weeks, I guess. 
Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but you got kind of get the point. You know, it's building. So lots to lots of uh, work left to do. Lots of rewards out there, and lots of people still needed for it. Philip, I'll give you the last words. We'll wrap it up. What do you got, sir? Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to have me. And I would like to say also, uh, uh, you know, we need all kinds of people, especially like if you're if you're students, if you're young, and you have maybe some extra time and. I feel like it, and it's not like you know, moon boy stories. I feel this this will be here in a two years, in five years, in ten years, in fifteen years. Just you know, try and uh, get get in, see see people, see what they're talking about, listen, learn something, say something. Community is very respectful, even when someone is like you know, maybe aggressive sometimes. Even and we. The, the, you know, the scale the situation, we calm down, we treat everybody with respect and just come in and I'll, I'm sure you'll find something that you enjoy, that you like, and that you can monetize at some point somehow, for sure. Thank you, Philip, for coming on Cardano Live. Feel free to come back anytime, man. Just let me know. Hit me up on Telegram. This has been a great conversation. Have a happy Friday. And remember, everybody, going for number one all day, every day. That's Cardano going for number one. Oh, uh, news came out today. Onboarding 100 million identities, the goal, 100 million identities in Africa on Cardano, 100 million within two years. That's the goal. I think we can hit it. That's about 1.6 identities per second for two years. I did the math. Thanks, Philip, man. <laughs> Peace out, brother. Hang with me.